To start off out of the box, you're going to want to fill the tank with oil, and we can fill it up to here on the sight gauge. Your fill cap for the tank is right here, on the front right corner. Any weight oil from an AW32 to an AW68 is acceptable. Once we've filled up our tank with oil through the fill, we'll connect our pressure and return lines to our application. The pressure port is right here on the top. This is a 3 8 BSPT thread, also known as British Standard Pipe Taper Thread, commonly referred to as an R thread. That's important, because we're going to be talking about 1000 PSI, so we want to make sure we have the right fitting, and we'll connect right off the head of the pump. When connecting your return line, you have multiple ports back here at the back of the tank. These three ports are half inch, and this port is one inch. The difference between the drain ports, being the outside two, and the middle two on the tank, are that the tank ports have a pipe inside that takes the oil down below tank level. This is important so we don't aerate the oil, so your return lines really should go here. The drain lines are for other applications. After we have our pressure and return lines connected, we are ready to connect our 200 volt three phase power, which is going to come in right here. There's already a knockout coming in landing on this terminal strip for a three-phase. A 15-amp circuit breaker is required for this unit. The phasing is not critical. They can be any orientation. The unit will figure it out on its own because it is a servo drive. So again, we got three phases here and your ground. Once you're secure, you can put the cover back on and you are now ready to power up the unit. Now that we have power on, you can see our display right here. The factory setting is going to read your current pressure setting of 1.5 MPa. We have four primary keys around the display. The circle key, which is the menu, the down arrow and up arrow for scrolling parameters, and the enter key, which saves or changes settings. From here, the first thing we want to do is we want to set our system pressure. You will want to loosen the jam nut on the overpressure valve adjustment screw and turn it clockwise all the way until it stops. To set system pressure, we need to get into parameter mode on the keypad. To get to parameter mode, we're going to hold down the menu and the return key simultaneously for three seconds until it flashes P00 on our display. From there, we use the up arrow to scroll up to parameter P13 and hit enter. You'll see the readout PL0 and our current pressure setting, which is 1.5. You can adjust that by using your up and down arrows. Once you've reached your set point, hit enter to save it. The next thing you'll see come up is QL0. It looks like a nine, but it's a lowercase Q. This is your flow, which is currently at 28 and a half liters per minute on this unit. If you want to reduce that, use your down arrow Hit enter to save your setting. Once you've made these changes, we can push the menu key and then it should go back to displaying your set pressure. After we've set our pressure and our flow, it's important we set the motor RPM. We want to keep the motor RPM around 380 when we're at an idle speed and the pump deadheaded to keep the temperature down and increase the longevity of this unit. To set our motor RPM, we're gonna start by loosening the motor RPM jam nut. On our display screen here, we're going to go to our monitor mode. To go to monitor mode, all we're going to do is hit the menu key and it will flash N00. Now to scroll up using the up arrow to N05. Hit enter. The value we see displayed is our actual motor RPM with a zero missing over here. There's always an empty zero in the ones place over here. So anything you see displayed for RPM, you need to multiply by 10. After we've reached that point, we can go back and set our RPM here by turning this in until our display shows 380 RPM, or 38 on the screen. Once there, we'll tighten down this jam nut. Then we can set our overpressure relief. We will start turning this out counterclockwise until we see the value rise on our display. Right when the motor RPM starts to rise, you can stop turning counterclockwise and turn back in slowly clockwise till you come back to 38 on the screen. Then turn clockwise an additional three quarters of a turn. 
This sets the overpressure to 0.5 MPA above system pressure. Our overpressure relief is now set, and you can tighten down your jam nut. So once that we've got everything tight and set, we should be displaying 38. You can go ahead and hit your menu key, and it will take you back to display your pressure setting.